in the weeks after, in a very simplified way, your brain is literally growing a bit. We call that neuroplasticity. Um, so, which helps you on the one side to develop habits or to get rid of habits. So it's extremely helpful if you want to get off an addiction, stuff like that. But also, if you look at brains after, the people seem to be more creative, yeah, and also more, again, it's very more open for the world. Yeah, so that is one, one big part is that sort of realization of your true self, of your also the neg negatives, also the painful ones. So it's incredibly trauma healing, which is, by the way, and I have to say it more often, like a trip must not be nice. It's not a party trip. It's nothing you want to do in a disco. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be extremely catharsic or extremely yeah. cleansing. Yeah. But you're always going to feel better after. Yeah. And I actually had a uh, very... Colloquially, we say bad trips, but I like the word more challenging trips, but they were actually the nicest or the best ones, not the nicest ones, but the best ones, because they gave me so much because I learned so much about, again, fears, whatever, which you try to hide very somewhere. Yeah. And you dissolve them. Anyway, so that's one thing. And the second big thing, what also happens is um, you feel connected to nature and other humans in a way you can't describe. And one other form, so, so there are several sources of mental health issues, if I'm being oversimplified. The one I already said is fear and trauma, yeah? And the other one is lost connections. A lot of people feel disconnected from everything, from the world, from, from people, whatever. And, and psychedelics bring back that enormous sort of love for, the creation, if I want to say now, it's like for humans, animals, this is why, by the way, this is why a lot of people go vegan after that, or at least say, I want to be more responsible towards my environment. And then the third part is very interesting. And that is maybe, and this, all of these things are very, I think, helping in what I said to de-traumatize the world. Um, th the third one is in the weeks after, in a very simplified way, your brain is literally growing a bit. We call that neuroplasticity. Um, so, which helps you on the one side to develop habits or to get rid of habits. So it's extremely helpful if you want to get off an addiction, stuff like that. But also if you look at brains after, the people seem to be more creative, yeah, and also more, Again, it's very more open for the world. And I think mm -hmm. what we all have to have to go into this time with the same mental health is like this awe, like this sort of, the future's going to be fine. Like we just need to find a way. Really so, but if you tell that a 60 year old, even leave away whatever the job is like some, so unfortunately, if you look at the brain, we, people always think of the aging of the body, but our brain round about when you're 30 is starting to age, not just in a, sort of mental capacity that you're losing gradually a little bit, like, but also you're literally closing down. Like if you go like in an old people's home, why do people not make friends? You would say they have time, they have the whole day, they should make a lot of friends, yeah? You literally can't. Your brain is not wired anymore. So you make your friends in your 20s, mm -hmm. yeah? When you're open, when so. so I mean, I, for example, all my friends I have, but I actually, I make new friends all the time because I think I'm always a lot of psychedelics. Like, so psychedelics, <laughs> back the fact that creativity. Well, we, beca we became friends in the last two years. Now, I don't know if you were tripping at the time, but. <laughs> yeah, so, so, no, so, but honestly, like, so, so you get back this sort of openness for the world. Yeah. And so, yeah, so in these three things, if I look at what we need, A, we need to have the discussion that we let's say that elite or we as the world, we need to offer a world where these people, I said like the uh, sort of the lower level jobs is going to where we find new jobs for them. But at the same time, we need to make sure that they want it by the way. So, and again, telling a 60 year old, look, you know what, you go back to university, even if you mentally, if he, if he, if he intellectually can, he doesn't have that impetus anymore with 60. However, he could have it maybe. 
Yeah, uh, with uh, psychedelics. Right. Yeah. It's like it's so, like telling or, a, it's like telling a journalist to learn to code. I guess that's a a, a big but problem. You could maybe, you yeah. could maybe if you uh, get a little bit of help. And by the way, one maybe example that becomes not too esoteric, where the UK as the first country, I think the first country, recognized loneliness as a disease, um, and especially in old people. And it's literally, by the way, if you look at the health data of people who are lonely at any age, their health is dramatically uh, getting worse because we're pack animals. Mm -hmm. So if we are alone, our stress level goes up permanently. We're, so we're gonna get depressive, which is again, depression has an impact on our immune system. So there is a, a really a downward spiral. So, so they're not saying yet that depression should be, uh, sorry, that, uh, uh, that uh, loneliness should be treated with psychedelics, but the first step is always to speak it out and say, okay, loneliness is a disease because now we can start going to the regulators and saying, hey, maybe we can prove you in a proper clinical study that psychedelics also might heal not just depression, what we are about to prove, but like also loneliness and stuff like that. And, and I think, again, coming back to the beginning, there will be someone a disease, again, we need a cool name for it, or cool, but, the, but like, which is that a fear of the future. Yeah, and, 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 and again, then once we have named it, we can maybe run clinical trials and we can bring the ball in motion. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm so with you on this that I think you're right. People have this sort of existential dread about the future. It feels like the past is kind of broken and they're just like, oh, they can't even see what is in the future. So. For people that know nothing about this, I think they're probably going, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does this guy just want me to be tripping on mushrooms all day? So what does what does like an actual uh, way of life look like incorporating some of this stuff? Like, are people just so, microdosing all day long? Uh, so microdosing is, is uh, okay, let's leave the mic because it's a complex answer. Like, let's stay with what, what we are doing. So yeah, I have a company sure. which just IPO'd, which is called Atai, A-T-A-I. Um, and we have more than 10 new mental health drugs, most of them psychedelic, in development. So what we're doing, we're taking actually either, we have a lot of what we call anecdotal evidence. So I'm always careful because like, I know that I had these amazing, not just one trip, yeah, and I know many friends, but in a scientific view, this is still anecdotal. It's like, okay, Christian, but at the same time, I know, to be fair, like, there are thousands of reports and, and thousands. Of, so, and some of these drugs actually, interestingly, in the last millennia, uh, in, in, in the last century, were legal, again, or medically available for depression and stuff like that, but it's sort of old data. But what we are doing, we're taking these anecdotal and partly historic, so to say, evidence, and really doing, and this is important, very rigorous, really state-of-the-art clinical trials under FDA and European um, supervision, yeah, in order to really prove it. At the moment, I have to say, Look, I do think magic mushrooms potentially or, or ketamine or ibogaine or all the psychedelics, DMT, 5-MODMT. Yeah, so I have to potentially say because it's in a sort of scientific mm -hmm. way not proven. But we're proving it now once and for all. And we are actually with some of them already in phase two, which is like sort of pretty advanced for biotech. Yeah, some are a little bit earlier stage. Um, but sort of I would say within the next five, six years, yeah, hopefully some of our drugs will be approved. So, and then this is important, they're gonna be medically available, not for take it home, not on prescription, but that you go to your psychotherapist or your doctor, yeah, and you do the trip with him or her, uh, which is important because you need a guide. Actually, when you look where these drugs coming from, they were used since thousands of years in ritualistic, shamanistic, religious way. So you always had a priest or a shaman with the disciple mm -hmm. and kind of can say the, 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 the psychotherapists are the shamans of our time. Sure. Yeah. So, but it's important. So we don't, we, we want to have it in this kind of restricted access, not because I, mean, I think ultimately big parts of humanity will, will sort of benefit from it. But it's very, it's a very powerful drug. So it's not that you, it's not like um, aspirin, you pop it and you're fine. Like, again, <laughs> part of the process is really touching your deepest fears, your, 
all of that. Yeah. So you have to do it with a psychotherapist. Uh, but that's what we want to make available. And I think we're on a good way with it. Yeah. Is, this may sound like an amateur question, but is, is everything that you're testing right now, is it all actually natural substances or is any of it made in a lab? Um, not all of it. Like, so some of the substances we have in our portfolio at a tie are originally nature substances, but in any case, may they be natural originally, or some of them are like take MDMA, which is a synthetic drug from the beginning. There is right. a nature, natural MDMA. So both. Yeah. But in any case, we are just using the synthetic version because you need to be precise in quality and dosage. So you can't, you will not have homegrown magic mushrooms in a hospital with a doctor because you need an exactly for a, for a patient you want the clean and perfect version. Yeah. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about tech instead of nonstop yelling, check out our tech playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.